Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Srini here. So this is the next video in our uh, API uh, UI automation framework tutorial playlist. And this is basically the prerequisite uh, number fourth one, right? So we have already seen the three prerequisites what we require for a UI automation framework. So this is going to be a very important session guys, because here you'll be able to learn a page object model. This is going to be a very critical topic. So for all those who are new to this channel, you can just go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications. You'll be getting a lot of free videos on Java, Selenium, Python, API automation, and you'll be getting interview questions as well. So stay tuned and let's uh, look at this topic today. So what is a page object model? So this is a lot of uh, confusion which is going on around the candidates who go for the interview. Sometimes they feel, is it like a framework? What exactly is it? What they should answer when the interviewer asks them this particular question is what the confusion everyone has, right? So you will be able to clear all that confusion in this session. I promise you that you'll be able to understand this concept fully and also be able to design a framework using this page object model and implement it as well. So let's go ahead and look at the key takeaways from this session. So you'll be able to understand what is a page object model. Okay. Is it a framework that myth will be clear? How to design a framework? of a UI automation using page object model. And the last one is that, how are we going to implement a page object model? So what is that we are going to use to get it implemented, right? So all of those we are going to look at in today's session. So page object model actually is not a framework. That's the first myth, which I want to clear. Uh, the reason being is that this is just a design pattern. It's not a framework. It is used in a framework. So when you create a UI automation framework, this is going to be used as a design approach, right? This is going to be used as a design approach for your object repository. So if you are not aware of what is object repository, let me just give you a quick idea. A object repository is nothing but a place or a storage, which will have all of your element locators stored. So we have already seen in a previous session in object repository that we can have it through a properties file. We can have it through a XML file. And I'd also mentioned in that slide deck that we have other ways of creating object repository and the other ways are page object model. Then we have another approach, which is page factory. We have the elements which can be stored in an Excel sheet, or we could store the elements in a database as well. So these are the different approaches what we can have for having an object repository. So we are going to look at page object model being used as an object repository. So it's not a framework. It's a design approach used for object repository in an automation framework, right? How are we going to achieve this page object model, right? And what is that page object model is going to offer to us? So let's go back to our UI. So we'll just open up an application and we will see what exactly is a page object model. So I've opened a website selenium easy demo, right? So this is the website which we had just seen a quick demo when we had looked at the first three sessions. So let's continue with the same website. So here you have got different elements in this particular page. This page is nothing but the demo home page. If you look at this, this is the demo home page. You can navigate from this page to any other page. Like you can go from here to simple form demo, right? So here every page has got a lot of different elements which are there, right? Now let's say that you start creating an automation script. So I'm sharing my project, which I had created for page object model prerequisite. So let's say that you uh, basically have a test case here. Let's just create one more at the test case so that I can explain you why we require page object model. So let's say we have a method called test home page and we want to test something with the UI. So what is the first step when we would want to do any operation with the UI? you would want to launch the particular website, right? So for that, we are having a base class. So there is a package called base and there is a base class. So here we are having before method and we are having after method, right? So in before method, we are having the initial configuration part done where the properties file, the file input stream, all those properties are basically initialized. And then we will be able to launch the browser and launch the application. That is what we do in the setup method. Right? So whenever we start our at the rate test before that, this particular before method is going to be launched. So our application would be launched. Now let's say that you are on the home page and you want to interact with these elements, input forms. 
so what is the approach what we can do we can directly start saying driver dot find elements right we can just directly say driver dot find element we can just identify the element locator be it through any method let's say we go by xpath we would want to find the xpath of this input forms right so i might have already stored in the properties file yeah i have stored it so i'm just copying it from here and we might be hard coding like this way so we have found the element and what else we want to do after that we want to click on it right so we are going to click on it so like that once we click on this input forms we might have to click on simple form demo or radio buttons demo so let's take the radio buttons demo a locator as well so again we are going to go with xpath so what is happening with this approach here we are basically nothing but doing hard coding of the locators within the test case method this is the test method right so we are doing the hard coding of our locators so these basically are nothing but the steps of a test case so we are basically hard coding the locators in this method now is this a good approach to go ahead and do it it is not a good approach why it is so because let's say that you are having from this page navigation to radio buttons demo later on after that you do a lot of actions onto this particular test case maybe clicking on this particular checkbox clicking on this button and you know just selecting whatever other values are there etc etc there are a lot of other operations which might be there so if you are having like this at the rate test if you are having let's say multiple at the rate test which are having a similar approach followed and let's say it is not just in the home page test you might have one more java file which might be doing some interaction with the home page maybe in the same package let's say we are having another file which is also having a similar kind of a approach followed we are like doing hard coding of the locators if i copy this file and create one more and let's say that that particular file is also doing some interaction with the home page so there as well we might be hard coding the locators so imagine you are having a complicated project a big project which is having so many application elements involved right web ui elements involved and if you try to hard code the locators in this fashion what is going to happen if in case uh, there is a requirement which comes up and the business asks that this particular locator uh, for some reason it's being changed from link to button or that particular text is not required it should be removed so if your script is having that particular element as a part of your step then it's going to fail right you have to do changes at all of your java files wherever you have hard coded the locators so that would mean lot of rework and effort has to be put in to replace it across all the files the framework might be complicated it might have lot of references involved across different files right so you don't want such a kind of thing to happen where you have done the hard coding of your locators as a part of your script the better approach would be you store it at one place the locators and then whenever a requirement changes you just go to that one particular place and change it that would solve the issue of updating at multiple places right so we want to have our code optimized and cleaner so that we don't have any kind of code change required just for the change of locator so for that reason i'm just deleting this file now so for that reason we are having a approach called page object model so what this particular approach says here it says that for every particular page in this entire application or any application for that matter you just create a separate java class so for demo home this demo home will have a separate java class the stable pagination is going to have a separate java class because if you click on it it is leading to a different page and it is having again another set of elements it's having a web table it's having pagination involved here it's having buttons here right so that is the approach which page of the model basically dictates that you have to have every page having a separate java file okay what will this approach do now it will basically help us to have our locators at one place for every page i will have its locators at one file or location so in future if i want to change any locator then i can just go to that particular file and change it that's all we require to do we don't have to go across multiple places and do some changes now this is the other approach i think but the page object model design pattern so what approach we have already looked at earlier was like to store the locators into one file config properties this is also fine this is also a good approach this page object model is a different approach 
of storing the object locators. So let's see how to store the object locators now from this particular example. So let's remove this particular code and let's just see what exactly we have to do for a page object model design pattern. So what I have to do is that this is my framework, right? And I have to create a package called pages. I have to create a separate package called pages and just create whatever files you require. So for demo home, I require a demo home page class. So I have just given a name as homepage.java, right? And I've made it extend the base class. This is the approach we are going to follow across our entire framework designing part. Be it a test case file. So we might have another package called test cases, right? So test we are going to have. So for that as well, we might be requiring to extend base class. So we are going to have test home page. We don't require main method because you're going to follow test ng concept. So this home page, let's have a look as to how we are going to design this entire class. So with one example, we will be able to understand what is a page object model design pattern and how is that we have to use this particular approach. Right? So let it have a constructor. It's not a worry. We'll keep it as it is. What we require here, an important thing is to identify the elements of the current page. So in this particular page, we have input forms, we have date picker, we have table. Okay. And even for that matter, simple form demo, checkbox demo, these links like this simple form demo is a part of this dropdown. So this dropdown also falls within demo home page only. So those elements also will be considered as a part of the home page. And whatever elements are found on the respective individual pages, those will be of the individual Java class files. So let's identify the elements of the home page. So we will have, so let's for now remove this. So let's say we have one element as input forms, right? So this is the first element I'm going to enter some locator. Input forms link is one. I have date picker, I have progress bar, right? So whatever ones we can just see as a simple example, let's look at that. Okay. So I'm directly going on to the practical part because I want to explain you all practically what is a page object model and then you will understand the theoretical part as well along with it. Otherwise you'll get bored if I just explain you the theory part. Now let's identify this input forms. So we have to go and inspect it. So I've already got the locators and everything readily available here. So what I would be doing is that I will be storing the element locator. Now the way we use in page object model is that we use so if you notice here driver dot find element, so this actually has to be within a method. So let's say we have a method M one. Okay. So here driver dot find element by dot xpath or by dot ID name, whatever method we want to use. That is how we create a web element, right? And then we finally put semicolon to complete it. Now, what if this particular portion is identified by my locating strategy, right? If I can replace this entire portion, then that would mean I just have to put that particular variable here rather than writing this part. So what page of the model design pattern says is that you don't have to create the entire syntax here. We will provide you this by part and you just have to replace in my driver dot find element, etc., to form the proper syntax. So how that is done is you just have to create the object of the by class and you have to give the name. So we are going to give the name as input forms. This is how you're going to give the name and you have to give the X path of that particular locator. So what we have to do is we are going to get the locators here, right? So input forms is basically identified through which method we are storing it in the form of a X path. So we have to come here and just use the by clause by class and just say by dot you'll be getting all of these different methods which are available. So we are going to use XPath and here, instead of hard coding, I have already stored the locators in my configured properties. I can use it from there, but we will not do that now because we are not going to mix the two approaches. We are going to follow either page object model or config property. So we are going to follow page object model here. So I would be hard coding inside this particular class because the approach says, just mention all the locators in this one Java file. If in future there is any changes to the locator or 
the x path or something has got changes change it by coming to this particular class file that is the approach right so let's copy the x path and put it here so we are not going to follow config properties so i have to comment out this part just so that you don't get confused i'm going to comment out this path and yeah that's all these two are the locators which are present now we are not using config properties for the locator right so we have got the element created now what else so we have to interact with the element right so we are going to basically have the element within the class and also the flows or the operations which we are going to do on the element so what we can do on the element we can just go to this element and click on it so that we get this drop down so we are going to create a method called click input form okay we are going to create a method called click input forms and here we are going to do the operation so we have say going to say driver dot find element now instead of saying by dot i already have got the input forms it's suggesting here just use that that's it just do dot operator and click on it so in short we are going to have the elements also created of that particular page and also the operations which can be possibly done on the element operations or flows of the page is what we are also going to capture these are the two aspects which we need to take care when we are designing a class file of a page object model create a web element present on the page right we don't have to do any other thing here because we are already extending the base class so it's going to get the driver session also so it's going to get the updated session that's all you require to do right now this particular method has to be called now right if you are going to do a test case like we had a test form page dot java right so if you had i'm going to have a test case like this so i'm going to have a test case here right i am going to just do the operation of clicking on the input forms and then proceeding further so let's just even have a radio buttons demo element as well a part of that so we'll create one more element and we'll call it as radio buttons demo so let's store the x path yeah and we have to even perform the action on radio buttons demo so we are going to say radio buttons demo okay now here is the catch if you click on radio buttons demo what is going to happen it is leading us to completely another page this is a radio buttons demo page so even if you look at the title part it says radio buttons demo for automation so if you want to maintain the session here there is a small catch which we are trying to understand in this example that is that whenever this driver is going to be returned back to the calling method it has to point to radio buttons demo page so in short we need another page called radio buttons demo that's why i've created one more page right so what we we don't require the constructor for now i have to have a element some element of this particular page and then do some action let's say i have this two radio buttons here so i want to find out the locator so we are going to find the x path for that it's a part of this panel body and it's a part of radio button demo so here is how i find the x path for this particular section this let's first find out if this particular section is unique now there are three panel panel default so i cannot uniquely identify it so let's come to this part below this we have radio buttons demo so i'm going to take this particular one to and i'm going to use x path access now okay i've got this text particular one highlighted but that's not all i have to go back to its parent and then i have to come to its child so i'm going to just use xpath access here the parent here is a div tag right i've got the section highlighted now i'm going to use the navigation part and where is the section now so this is div there is only one div here 
no right there are two div this is the first one this is the second one so i'm going to say from this if i want to navigate i will say div of two so i've come to this panel body and i have to click on the radio button so which is first label so i'm going to say label of one and click on the input radio button that is the input I've got this particular radio button check now. So let's say by mail button equal to. So let's say mail okay. and let's say store the XPath. So I'm going to say by dot XPath. That's it. It's got the element and next we have to click on this get checked value. So let's identify. So this particular one is a part of same part panel body so if you just notice here there are two labels here and we should be having one more element here okay so let's expand this paragraph here it is get checked value so it's a part of p and p is a part of your div tag right this parent one so we have to come back to this one If I say P, it's leading to the first part. I want the second one, right? And inside that, we want to go to the exact button. So with this button, here we go. So we have to identify the X part. So we'll say get check value by dot X path and then give the X path, right? So this is how we are going to do the creation of the elements. And once that is done, we have to do operation on that. So what we are going to do here, we're going to click on this button and we're going to click on this button as well. So the operations are same, but we are going to do that individually on every element. So we are going to say, click on element. And we are going to have another method as well. Similarly for get checked value. So this is how the operations and the elements have to be defined within the respective class. So click on get check value. Right. Now let's just do that. So we are going to say driver dot find element mail dot click. Yeah, mail dot click. Similarly for the get check value. Right. So the operations are all done now on the other page. So what we are going to do on the home page now, instead of just having this method left as it is, since we know if you click on not the input forms, the radio buttons demo, if you click on radio buttons demo, it is going to lead us to this radio buttons demo page. So we have to make it a sign object of radio buttons demo. Okay. So we are going to say radio button demo. You're going to just create an element of that. So yeah, it's asking that it cannot be converting from white to radio buttons demo. So we have to return an, this particular element. So we're going to say return radio button. But we have to make the return type change to radio buttons demo. Okay. Now what is the issue? Cannot convert from void to radio buttons demo. Yeah, so what actually the error is indicating is that once you click on it, see, just if you go on the error part, you'll understand the error. Cannot convert from void to radio buttons demo because it's not returning any value. So we cannot assign this particular statement a value. So instead, once it clicks on it, then let me just put this part here. I'll just say return new radio buttons demo. And it's an object I'm returning back. The reason is because once you click on this particular hyperlink, you're going to be redirected to the radio buttons demo page. So you're going to return the object of that particular page. So whenever we are calling it from a test case, we are going to assign this particular element. So let's see how that action is going to be done. So we are going to launch the browser and everything is going to happen through this base class. So we don't have to worry. An application is going to be launched. Now we are coming back to the home page, right? The home page. This is the place where we have to click on input forms page. 
so let's get started so we'll go to test home page we are in public test home page so it also has to extend the base class this is the first step right so let's import it now what we are doing in a base class in a base class we are already having a before method and it is doing all the configuration part so we don't have to worry at all anything so we'll just not worry about anything here if you want you can just call super method that's it now let's come back to the test case part so everything is going to be launched the website is ready we just have to interact with the elements of the home page so we have to create the object of the home page so what i am going to do i am going to first create the global elements of the home page like this it's just a declaration part because i want to use it across all my test methods so i'm going to just create a elements of the different pages i'm going to use and import them that's it now let's come back to the test case what we have to do we have to use this home page object because we are currently having nothing but the driver pointing to a home page right so we are going to initialize the home page object first so that it doesn't get a null pointer exception so home page equal to new home page so we are basically creating an object once that is done we have to invoke the methods which method we are going to invoke now we are going to use click input forms so let's copy that so we are going to say home page dot click input forms okay once that is done it's going to be still on the same page nothing is going to change but after that we have to click on radio buttons demo as well but here this radio buttons demo is returning you radio buttons demo object so you have to just initialize whatever value it's returning just make it assigned to radio button object all right so once that is done you are actually done whatever you want to do on the home page so still if you want to print the title you can do that you can just say application title of current page is driver dot get title and you can even copy this particular line and give it here so this will exactly tell you which particular page you are redirected to now once we have reached to radio buttons demo page we are going to use a radio button object so we are going to access its method so with this radio button object so let's say radio button dot and what we are going to do we are going to click on this particular element and we are also going to click on the other element and then run the test case so click on get checked value and that is it now let's say you want to find out if you just select this and if you click on get checked value you want to assert what is the message being shown here this is the message being shown that is if we expand this particular button radio button mail is checked so if you want to navigate to the xpath part okay this would have been the third paragraph within the xpath so that would mean it is p3 and it's not a button so we are going to remove that part so we are getting this element highlighted so we just have to get the text of it so what we will do is uh, we will just go back to our home page and we will create another element Not home page, sorry. It's radio buttons demo. We'll create another element, which is the text being shown or displayed. Um, I'll just say displayed text. This is which section? So this is radio button demo section. So I'll just say radio button demo displayed text. So by dot xpath, and we are going to store the xpath here. now what is the action we are going to do we are going to get the text we have to get the text of this particular element so that we can assert with our expected result so i will say click on display text or i will say get display text right so driver dot find element and we are going to use this element now 
and instead of click it's going to be get text so you would be getting the entire string value so we are going to return the type as string right and yeah so we have to store this or we can directly say return that's it so this particular part is done now we have to invoke this method using its object so let's go back to the home page and we will use assert now because using test ng i'll say assert dot assert equals and i am going to compare two strings here so i can just compare it using this method assert equals string expected followed by actual so expected yeah so here if it does like this you have to understand that it is not using test ng if it is striking off so be careful about what is getting used so just go to the top and see what is getting imported see j unit got imported so this should not happen you should be using test ng so delete that sometimes when we are trying to do it automatically it causes a issue assert dot assert true I'm going to do this way. I'm going to hard code for now the expected text, but you can even store that if you want in separate uh, properties file. You can store it somewhere. You can store this particular one. The button mail is checked, and we are going to assert it with whatever value we have got from here. Click on get checked value. Oh, no, we have to have one more element, right? We have to click on that to get the value. So that is radio button dot. Okay, so what is that? Let's have a look. Right? The element get displayed text. So we want to access this particular method get displayed text. So this is going to store some value. Let's create a local variable, say actual text. Now initializing it to null. I'm just assigning this value, and let's just assert this particular one. So that means. If these two get matched, then our test case is successfully passed, and we have to use org dot test ng, not j unit framework. Assert equals yeah, we're going to use assert equals, not assert true. So that's all as a part of our test case. We have got the title. We are going to just check out that the radio button mail has been checked, and what is the text being shown? We are going to compare it with the expected result. So let's go ahead and run this particular test case, and let's look at the result. So let's go ahead and run this particular file. I just right click and do run as test ng test. So it's going to launch the browser, and you should be able to see the test case getting executed. So it's clicked on input forms, and it has clicked on mail option, and it has you know. Even you don't get checked value. Now the reason it got closed is because we have got after method which is going to quit the window. So let's comment out that part. So we'll go to base class where we have got the after method as well, and we are going to comment out this part. Now let's re-execute this test case, and we should be able to see it. So if you come to the expected result here, actual console result here, we can see the application title first. It was showing you best demo website to practice, and then it went to the radio buttons website. And it has passed. That means the assertion has been successful. So it did compare the expected and the actual text, and this found out to be exactly matched. That is where test case got passed. If you make this, let's say, if I remove this, is word right? Now it's not going to match. So it should show you error and it should fail. So let's rerun this test case again. and this time you're not doing quitting the window so it's going to show us what exactly is happening yeah that's it so we have got this button clicked and we've got the text let's come back to the test case now if you look at the result it's showing failure one because the assertion got failed expected radio button mail is checked but found radio button mail checked this was the expected result but you actually this was the actual result being found out if you look at the actual result it is radio button is checked but we have given radio button mail check we have removed the is word that is why it's causing a mismatch 
if I were to come back to the original part, right? So then it should be able to run fine. So let's run it again. So this was just an example which I wanted to show you all how to design a page object model and even implement it. So we have done all of that in this particular session. So we are going to do it in a similar way when we are working with the framework, we are going to do it in a similar way. We have to use this concept in this manner. And the reason why it is working so smoothly with so many connection as well. See, these are different pages, input form, demo home, but since we have still we have maintained the driver session without passing any driver variable at all because we have created a base class that is why base class is so important we have to have a base class always in a framework and make this particular driver variable static so that every class which is extending the base class be it a test home page be it a home page or be it radio buttons demo all of them first of all get the driver variable and they don't have to have an object of that particular class created, they can directly access it because we are making that particular variable as a static and directly it's a class variable. When I say a static, it's a class variable. It's shared across all the objects. So the same session is going to be carry forwarded. It's not going to be separate for individual object because you've made that particular variable as static. That is why this driver make variable made a static plays such a key role. We have to keep a note of that. And you can also make this properties, the file input stream, these also are static. It's up to you, but this driver has to be static, right? So this is how we have created a simple test case and we have ran it as well using a page object model design approach. I hope you have understood this particular approach and you will use and implement it in your framework. We are going to see in the next lecture how to create a page factory and implement in a framework. Thanks guys for watching this video and do share with your friends and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done yet. Thank you so much.